Now let's get back to stocks. Following today, as President Trump goes on the offensive against the European Union, the EU, saying that he wants to impose billions of dollars in new tariffs. In a tweet, the president saying that the World Trade Organization, the WTO, finds that the EU subsidies to Airbus has adversely impacted the U.S., which will now put tariffs on $11 billion worth of EU products. The EU has taken advantage of the U.S. on trade for many years, and it will soon stop. Joining me for reaction and the impact of all of this, uh, Bell Point's asset management chief strategist, David Nelson, Mahoney asset management president, Ken Mahoney. Uh, guys, good to see you. So not only are we battling China when it comes to a, a trade war, but we're also taking on the EU as well. But I would say that the dollar amount is so much lower, don't you think, at $11 billion? It's almost like a drop in the bucket if you compare it to the U.S.-China trading relationship, right, right. It's more about the uncertainty because, you know, most investors say, hey, this China trade deal is still open. We want to check that box before jumping in the ring with some other continent or some other country and start up with them. So I think it's more about the uncertainty, though. I have to say the market's not really selling off sharply because of it and maybe excuse because coming into earnings. This has been a really a strong market. And, you know, every now and then people want to take some chips off the table. And some uncertainty today, you know, in that combination is kind of what we're seeing here. What, 12, 13 percent gains for the S&P this year, best start to the new year since almost 1998 or something like that. So it's a bit of a breather heading to earnings. Yeah, David. pretty extraordinary. You know, almost every asset class is up this year, I, I think, except for the euro. Actually, oil led the way. Uh, a lot of good news is priced in. So investors are a bit nervous right now. We're heading into earnings season. Earnings are going to be down year on year, but the good news is that revenue is going to be up. This is largely margin compression mm -hmm. because of some good things like wages going higher. Yeah, I would yeah. say compared to a really strong 2018, 2019 is not going to look that great. But still, companies are making a lot of money. Yeah, and also we have the Fed on the side, right? They give them the green light. We went from the October uh, 3rd, October 4th, which was, hey, we're far away from neutral. Right. You know, December 19th, raising rates and going to raise rates all through 2019. And on January 4th, that's when this market turned and said, wait a second. You know, we're almost all clear here. The Fed is now... On, on the accommodative side, and that's what's giving us this bid here. It really I, is helping out quite a bit. I'll take in on that. I, I think it's safe to say that this is, you know, largely because of the Fed. This is a 180-degree turn. Absolutely. And I think it's safe to say right now that, that last year was a policy mistake. The good news is that Jay Powell and and the Fed actually got the message of the markets, and they reversed course, and, and they should have. Well, yeah. well Stephen Moore and Herman Cain <laughs> have their voices if right. they get on the board. But are they going to cut interest rates this year, Ken? I, I hope not. I mean, again, people were rooting for that, but that means we have negative news coming out. And look, I thought the president did a good job jabbing at Powell early on and said, you don't get it. A hero on fiscal side trying to make the economy grow, and here you are with a bucket of cold water throwing on top of it, slowing it down. Right. But as far as asking for a rate cut now, I, I think the pause is, is better. Just kind of see where we are and go from there. I think the pause yeah. is better. But right now, the probability points to a rate cut sometime before uh, December, and it's about 40 percent right now. In an rising. economy that's growing at 3 percent with 7 million Look jobs at the yield available. Curve. The yield curve, by definition, is with telling you that. With 12 percent gains in the S&P I mean, this, this year. I this is the Goldilocks economy, One of two right? things is going to happen. Either the long end is going to go up or the short end is going to go down. But one way or the other, it's going to resolve itself. Right. But yeah. aren't they getting ahead of their skis? I mean, don't you need to keep your powder there's no, dry there's... in case there is an actual downturn in the economy? Well, then the, they the should economy. be addressing the balance sheet. That's what they really need to address. And that's really the the big mistake here. We have, what, where, where are we right now on, on the balance sheet? Even if we get it down to 36 billion, trillion? which is what their intention is, yeah. that's seven times where we were before the financial crisis. If you're going to get your powder dry, start there. Okay, what that's about right. earnings quickly? Because um, people are predicting an earnings recession. I don't, I don't, they I don't see that. Look, they brought the expectations so down. And let's see, let's see the reaction to it. But again, when the Fed is in, the, you know, is in play, you know, that's a different thing that we saw the September quarter. Here, the Fed is laid off, and now we can expand, you know, expand those multiples. And yeah. that, I think that's where it's going to happen this earnings season. And again, we'll watch what's going to happen, but with the Fed, you know, being really accommodative, I think I think the earnings will be fine. Two bulls, I like two this. bulls. Yes, yes. <laughs> very optimistic. Thank you, guys. Good to see Thanks you, David and Ken. There.